Hello everyone. Welcome <laughs> to Orchids for Dummies. A place where you can get your life. And in today's video, Foul Pals, I will be helping you choose the best pot and mix for your Phalaenopsis orchids. New beginners, stay tuned. If you are a new beginner like me, then you're probably going out trying to get some potty mix for your Phalaenopsis orchids. Especially if you are a new millennial that is addicted to houseplants. Yes, God, you would not use this, okay? This is for your indoor plants and it's not going to be adequate for your Phalaenopsis orchid. If you don't believe me, I will leave a link to the video of when my neighbor potted her Phalaenopsis orchid into the into this potting mix. It was disastrous, foul pals. Now this potting mix is no good for the Phalaenopsis orchids because um, Phalaenopsis orchids are epiphytic, meaning that their roots like to have air circulation around it, okay? They don't pull the nutrients um, from the dirt as they would, as a house plant would, okay? The Phalaenopsis orchids are known to cling to trees and grow high up on the branches of bigger trees. So, potting mixes is for plants that go in the ground, okay? Stay tuned. So, Val Pals, I have below, right here, a beautiful Phalaenopsis orchid that is grown in a method that is very controversial. It's known as the water culture method, okay? Now, you will have a lot of people saying that the water culture method is idiotic, it makes no sense, it's a death trap, so forth and so on. As I said, I've been growing for 10 months, and honey, I have done it with many of failures, but now I am finally able to simplify it for you guys in a way that you can understand. I will also leave a video link up above. Press it, baby, and it'll let you know how to maintain your Phalaenopsis orchid in water culture. Now, the reason why someone would choose to do, um, use the method of water culture is if you are a new beginner, a new grower, growing Phalaenopsis orchids for the first time. Now, many of times you probably have gone to someone's house, maybe your auntie, and you have seen them with a plant inside of water. And that is called propagation, trying to get new roots from a piece of a plant that was already healthy. It's gonna be a little different from your Phalaenopsis orchids. We predominantly use it to produce new roots for orchid that has none, okay? You see the new roots? Now, I am going to um, let you guys know that if you don't have any potted mix available, the water culture method will be effective until you're able to get another type of potting mix. Stay tuned! Next up is gonna be your premium, your premium New Zealand sphagnum moss, honey. This is one of my favorites because you will always need this on hand. This is another great way to produce new roots. Now, a lot of the times when you receive your Phalaenopsis orchid, it may even come in sphagnum moss. Not necessarily New Zealand, but you have something that's called peat moss. And peat moss is going to be just a cheaper brand, just something that the manufacturers can throw into in the pot to hold humidity for the roots until we, the consumer, purchase it, okay? Now, this little block right here will go a long way, darling. And even after you have wet the uh, moss and made it expand, you could dry it back out, put it back in a Ziploc bag, and it will last and keep you for a very long time. Now, when I get to the conclusion, I will let you know, according to me, when is the best time or the best way to use New Zealand sphagnum moss, honey. You talking to a fab pal that has specialized, okay? My house plants has New Zealand sphagnum moss. You don't believe me, stay tuned. This is my first house plant, which is going to be a pothos, okay? And as you can see, I layered the potting mix 
which is going to be the dirt, the soil, I layered it with a layer of um, New Zealand sphagnum moss. And the reason that I did that is because you see all of these little babies down here. Let me get you a closer look, look. That is because I had that moss down there to keep these roots right here moist. So they were adequate to grow. That's all. Now New Zealand sphagnum moss and is like glue. A little dab of do you. I do not endorse any brand. All that I can tell you is that um, a lot of us might hear repotme.com and think that that is the only place to get your orchid supplies. I just want to let you know to shop around first, darling, because I assure you that this bag right here, which is going to be like four quarts, okay, four quarts, go to repotme.com and see what you can get with four quarts. I paid $3 for this, okay? So all I'm telling you is sometimes you can get this stuff out of Lowe's big box stores so you don't have to pay that shipping and handling. Now, this is going to be um, a special orchid potting mix. Now, I saw from Foul Pals on Facebook that Better Grow even has a potting mix specifically for your Phalaenopsis orchid. But this right here is going to be good for Phalaenopsis, Cattleyas, Dendrobiums, Sibidiums, Uncidiums, and all epiphytic orchids. It's all natural, special formula. You got your um, fair bark right here. You got your charcoal, and you got your pedial, I mean, perilite, I'm sorry. And I will explain what all of this is for, okay? This is going to maintain a good and healthy pH, the charcoal. And the um, perilite, it's just to help with drainage because you never want water sitting at the bottom of your pot. That is the quickest way to suffocate your epiphytic phalaenopsis roots. Inside, you will see, and it comes in all different sizes when it comes to bark. You can also get bark by itself, okay? But the brand that I'm using, which like I said, I don't endorse, but what you are looking for are big pieces of bark because once you put the media in the pot, you need air to be able to move around, okay? Now, I've been soaking and soaking, so a lot of the perlite and charcoal is going to be on the bottom because the lighter um, bark is going to float to the top. Okay, foul pals, stay tuned so on the list. It's going to be lava rocks and also river rocks. Yes, honey, now you see why mama had to make a video for you because it can get so confusing. Now, the, what I would have you to know about the river rocks is you want to make sure that you're not getting the decorative rocks that has the painting on it because the painting on those rocks can be poisonous for your epiphytic phalaenopsis orchid roots. Okay, new beginners. Now you also have lava rocks. Now, the reason I have the lava rocks is because I don't know much about it, and I want to learn, and as I learn, you guys will learn. I will tell you that there is a channel called Rick L. Orchids. Rick L. Orchids, he is the best with growing Phalaenopsis orchids on any of a thing. I have even seen him grow, your or grow his orchids on a brick. Fab pals, yes, honey. I'd have seen them growing it on a brick. Fab pals, let them know in the comment box. Rick L does not play. Now you also have my dear Fab pal Blanca from Orchid Diva. She grows her Phalaenopsis orchids on her trees. Okay, so what all of this concludes to is it depends not only on your living environment, okay, but it also the pot. The pot of the Phalaenopsis orchid and that orchid plays a great part in what pot and mix do you want to choose? Stay tuned. Now you see I have a little river rocks at the bottom and that is going to be for stabilization. I also have a um, bark in the middle and I have a layer of, top, of moss on top. And what I was presuming was that the moisture from the river rocks would slowly evaporate and keep the bark at a nice medium level. And um, as the um, sphagnum moss starts to dry up, the water would sink down. So ultimately, the roots would stay hydrated. 
it is not the most effective way because these, this plant is drinking water so fast. So if that's the case, you would need even more sphagnum moss, okay? So whenever you have a Phalaenopsis orchid, and you water it and instantly in a day or two it becomes bone dry then yeah you might want to add just a little bit more sphagnum moss also many of us like i said we get our phalaenopsis orchid and it comes bumbled and jumbled into this potting um sphagnum moss and what you want to do is take it out and repot it because a lot of times the sphagnum moss would suffocate the roots, especially if it's not premium sphagnum moss such as this. So if I'm going to convert a phalaenopsis from the store that has sphagnum moss into it, the potting mix that I would choose for that phalaenopsis is going to be the potting mix that it came in. Okay, foul pals, stay tuned. This baby right here, when you have a pot that is very ventilated, such as this, this is gonna be a pot that is very good for moss. If I had bark, okay, foul pals, it would dry out way too fast for the phalaenopsis, even before the phalaenopsis could even um, absorb the water, such as this phalaenopsis right here. This is one that I recently planted in bark. <laughs> And as you can see, she's starting to get so dehydrated because the um, bark is not keeping enough moisture. So I'm going to either need to put a lot more sphagnum moss in it or to convert it to water culture until it's able to completely hydrate itself. Okay, foul pals? I hope I was able to simplify it. This is the most effective way. You get some of this and some of that and you mix it out <laughs> and you throw it all about. So foul pals, I hope I was able to simplify it for you. Just remember, you want to use 80% bark and 30%, I mean 20% sphagnum moss, and that is the ideal potting mix for your Phalaenopsis orchid. If you don't believe me, ask the people below. They will verify it for you. Help them out, foul pals. Until next time.